What is up guys? Fick Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be showcasing the complete guide for how to get the brand new Ruinous Effigy Exotic Trace Rifle just added into Destiny 2 with Season of Arrivals and as you can see from the gameplay I actually have this weapon. This ain't no database clickbait let me tell ya. And this is one of the craziest exotics I've ever seen. You kill enemies and produce void or that you can pick up and use to smack or slam on other enemies. What the heck? So, let's get started. So, first things first, you're gonna head down to the Prismatic Recaster beside the Drifter. Pick up the weekly Means to an End quest if you haven't, and right after you do that, you're going to see the Exotic quest also available to pick up. Now, the first step is to complete the Interference mission that's available on IO. However, you do not have access to this mission until you've done the weekly Means to an End mission. So, make sure you do that by first going to Titan this time around. Yep, usually you're going to go and do contact public events on IO, but just this week there are no more spawning on IO and they're now spawning on Titan. So head down there. If you complete two, you will advance to the next part. And that next part is, as always, collecting Umbral Traces. Now, depending on how many you've done before, your step for this may be a little bit different in the activities you need to do, but this week, it's to do the Escalation Protocol, Gambit or Gambit Prime, or the Reckoning. And keep in mind that with this step, there's always something else you can do to earn additional progress for Umbral Traces. This time, as you can see, it's through Ability Final Blows, and by defeating Boss. So, I think the easiest here is to go to the Reckoning, specifically Tier 2 or Tier 3. All of the bridge locations during that encounter are guarded by what's considered bosses. So you're going to get so many Umbral Traces as you can see. And then just put on an exotic armor piece like for example, I'm a Titan, I'm using the Doomfang Pauldrons exotic gauntlets and they give me pretty much infinite super. So it's pretty easy to complete this step. Now once you do get enough Umbral Traces, then you'll have access to do that mission. And even though the contact public events have moved to Titan, the interference mission is still on IO. So select it, load it up, and do it. It's actually not very different from the usual interference missions. If you've done them before, you'll be right at home again. But at the very end, when you're talking to Eris, Zavala shows up. And then, after a bit of a conversation, you're going to interact with a branch of the Silver Tree and continue this exotic quest. Now the next step is a long one. You're going to have to collect 25 Calcified Light and you're also going to have to defeat 15 of Savathun's marionettes. Now for the marionettes, you're just going to encounter them randomly on either Io or Titan. And specifically on Io, they spawn very numerously. And I'm going over these first because you're going to have the opportunity to run into some and kill some as you're looking for the calcified fragments so you can kind of do two steps in one. So they're going to be roaming around most commonly the Rupture and Lost Oasis areas of Io and they're just going to be champions. But as you can see, they're actually literally called Savathun's marionettes. And what type of champion is going to be different? Sometimes they were overload, sometimes uh, they were unstoppable, etc. Now what you want to do to look out for these is to pay attention to the bottom left text on your screen. As you can see, it will say things like, Blight, Taken Disruptors are nearby, or Taken Flesh Crafters are nearby, or just Taken Blights have spawned. There's just a bunch of different things you want to look out for, and those lead to many events. As you can see, there's a big Taken Centurion here with an overshield. Kill the Blight, then you can damage him. Once you kill him, look, the Marionette spawns. Also, you have uh, kind of what's similar to the Contact Public Event boss, two knights with shields. If you get them close enough, you can kill them both. Once you do, another Taken Marionette will spawn. The Flesh Crafters, uh, that's the one where the Marionette spawns with them, so you can just kill that guy and go away. 
So if you have multiple people in your fire team, you can have like one person in Lost Oasis, one person in the arrival area, and then wh whoever sees something on their screen first in terms of the text, everyone just goes to that area, kill the marionette, maybe go to uh, the other area after to try to double dip, all of that stuff. But that's what you wanna do for the marionettes. Pay attention to the text, do those little public events, and kill them. Oh, one more important thing. If you're running in a fire team, make sure all members of that fire team damage the marionette. Whoever doesn't damage the marionette, it actually won't count towards their 15. So if one teammate goes and solo kills the marionette, it will not count for the other two. So keep that in mind. Okay, now let's talk about that calcified light. There's 25 different locations all over Titan, Io, Mars, and Mercury. So let's do Io first. Now you're going to see the location of these objects when you take out your ghost. As you can see, like spawning in near Asher Mir, if you look up and to the right, there is an objective marker with a distance marking importantly, and if you head up the pyramid, kind of wind your way up, at the very top, as you can see, we have our first calcified light. Then at the opposite end of this same location, as you can see, there's two different locales here. So one is underneath this tunnel, at the back of the cave and the other one as you can see is also underneath a nearby tunnel in this rock that's kind of jutting out again in a very similar area as you can see. Moving on from there, if you leave this area on your sparrow and arrive in Lost Oasis, as you can see, there's a massive tree in front of you. Head up here, and if you have your ghost out, you can see two different locations. Now, something important to mention, you can actually kind of take your ghost out while you're on your sparrow. If you're on your sparrow, press that button, and all the objective markers will come up around you. So it's a really easy way to zoom around the maps and find these fragments. In any event, once you collect the light up in this tree, if you whip out your ghost, you can see another objective marker, and this one is kind of behind the edge of the cliff, as you can see. From there, head towards this massive tree trunk that's right near the Unexpected Guests Adventure, and you can jump your way up into the tree trunk, kind of, and there's a tree in here, and right at the back, there is another fragment. And uh, you can also just go through this massive opening that we found after the fact, but yeah, just thought I would mention it. Next up, we're gonna load into Giant Scar, and there's actually four here. So firstly, if you head into the big building, like right in front of you, stay within this building and head to the far right. As you can see, there's one up on this kind of upper area. After grabbing that, you're going to head outside of this building, and as you can see, there's basically markers everywhere. One kind of directly in front of you, a little bit on the edge of this cliff or bluff here. Then there's going to be another one if you just kind of go in a circle that's uh, in this cave as you pass it. After that, there's going to be one on the top, the little rooftop of this tiny little building here. And that is it. You're going to be leaving Io with 10 of these different calcified lights. All right, so let's go to Titan. Now, when you first spawn in and take out your ghost, you're probably gonna see one right in front of you uh, down on the lower area. So you can hop down there. It's just kind of in the building, like underneath the rooftop here. Now, once you've grabbed that one, you're probably gonna turn around and look back up at Sloan, and there's another one very near Sloan. So head back up to her and head out of this doorway here, and you'll find it no problem. Now those are actually the only two in that area, so head to the rig area of Titan to find the other three. To get the first one, as you kind of just load into this area, head to your right, and it's gonna be kind of on the very edge of the platform. Then from here, if you whip out your ghost, you can see two more kind of directly in front of you. So head over to the other corner of this platform. Uh, there's one again at the very edge, and then you can see the other one, it's inside this building here. So head inside and you'll find it almost immediately. Now those five are it for Titan. So you should be leaving here with 15. Moving on from there, we have Mars. And upon immediately spawning in, whip out your ghost. Uh, there's quite a few actually within sight. So the first one is going to be inside the area where Anna Bray is, uh, just underneath this structural pillar right here. Then after you grab that one, you're going to kind of whip outside, like just beyond Anna Bray, like through the window that you can't go through. On top of this cylinder, you'll find another one. 
Then if you kind of backtrack all the way uh, just before the Lost Sector uh, kind of in this area, there's going to be another one within this building. Now that's it for this area, but we're going to drive down to Glacial Drift. So after taking your sparrow here, if you whip out your ghost, you're going to see one immediately. It's actually inside this train cart, as you can see. Then the next one is going to be kind of tucked away here. You have to jump up this elevator and midway through, you'll find that one no problem. And that is it for Mars. Another five leaving you at 20 out of 25. Lastly, we need to go to Mercury. So once you spawn in on Mercury, there's actually a lot that you can see within close proximity. If you turn to your right and then look downwards, there's gonna be one like right there at your feet. So grab that one and then continue going around that way of the massive kind of pillar you're at here. And you're gonna find another one, as you can see, uh, tucked away on this ledge. If you continue going forward, uh, we kind of went past one to be honest, but there's one uh, just beyond here behind this rock. And then if you double back, or you can obviously get this one first, there's one back up uh, again along the edge of this massive initial pillar. And then the very last one you're gonna need is basically on the other side of Mercury. So head, you know, the opposite end, and you're gonna see this just kind of tucked behind this rock on this ledge right here. And that is all 25 calcified lights. If you don't have all 15 marionettes at this point, simply head back to the rupture on Io and wait around for those uh, kind of events I've already explained. Now, once you've done both of these steps, your quest is going to update and now you have to complete games of Gambit and Reckoning, get Void Kills and Precision Multi-Kills. Now importantly, even though it says Gambit and Reckoning, it should be Gambit or Reckoning. And importantly, the higher tiers of Reckoning you do contribute more progress as well as getting Invader Kills while you're in Gambit. So on Reckoning Tier 3, which is what we did, it took 3 Tier 3 completions and we were at 1 hundred percent for this top step now as for void kills and precision multi kills some important things to note if you are in reckoning it's just a smorgasbord of enemies like there's just tons of taken absolutely everywhere so that's probably going to be the easiest way to get uh, this step done now you can do both void kills and precision multi kills at the same time what i was using and what i would recommend is the hammerhead machine gun very accurate very powerful it can kill like the lowest tier red bars and a single headshot so very easy to just wipe an entire group of enemies out with all precision kills and of course it's void as well so you're going to be progressing both of those things at the same time and if you don't have the hammerhead just an accurate powerful void weapon will fulfill the same role however if you get your precision multi-kills done very quickly, for example, and you're kind of lagging behind on void kills, ability kills seem to grant more progress. So just whip out your void super, void grenades, whatever, and that will progress that part uh, pretty fast. But we found that we were able to get 100% in void kills and precision multi-kills pretty easily before we were done all three of our tier three reckoning games. All right, now once you're 100% in all of these different things, your quest step is going to update and you're straight up going to get an exotic engram. So maybe make sure you have space in your inventory to receive an engram just in case something goes wrong. But if you look at your quest step, it's actually still ongoing. You're gonna have to go to the Umbral Decoder right beside the Drifter to decrypt this exotic engram. So head down there and as you can see if you click on it you're going to be able to select the ruinous effigy and straight up get it and that is it for how to get this weapon one more thing of note if you start using it apparently if you just pick up one of the orbs and start smacking people as you can see you get the exotic catalyst that you can then progress like pretty much immediately so probably worth knowing that in any event, guys, again, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.